First at four, the clock is ticking, oxygen running low, but there could be signs of hope in the search for a missing sub, the latest from the Coast Guard. Also fighting auto thefts in Metro Detroit, a bunch of police departments banding together to protect your cars and so much more. Plus, here's Kim. Well, it looks like a beautiful afternoon on Exact Track 4D radar, but if you look closely, there's one teeny tiny area of rain. We'll zoom in and do some street level mapping and show you where it is this afternoon. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. First at four, signs of hope and new rescue equipment on the way to help five people lost underwater in the North Atlantic Ocean. But can they be found in time? Good afternoon. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm Christy McDonald in for Karen Drew today. The people on board that small submersible have about 14 hours of oxygen left after losing contact back on Sunday. Right now, the Coast Guard says this remains a search and rescue mission, but significant challenges remain. Kimberly Gill is tracking the search, and Kim, those signs of hope involve sounds coming from underwater. That's right, and Christy, good afternoon to you. The Coast Guard tells us banging noises have been heard in the search area, giving everybody hope that those crew members might still be alive and a rescue might be possible, but we caution the exact location and source of the sounds has not yet been determined. Rescue crews are using the sounds to guide their search, which started in an area twice the size of the state of Connecticut and two and a half miles deep. The big challenge is to locate the sub and then find a way to bring it to the surface before the crew's oxygen supply runs out. Nothing about the search is easy, but during the last update, the Coast Guard says it's not time to give up yet. We have to remain optimistic and hopeful when you're in a search and rescue case. So we're in this, we're right in the middle of the search and rescue case. So I, I don't, I don't want to get into a discussion about when that would end um, with respect to this case. You have to carefully consider uh, all of the factors, and um, there are a lot of factors you consider. And then after you consider all of those factors, sometimes you're you're in a position where you have to make a tough decision. We're not there yet. Now, it's very important to note that 96 hours of oxygen is a target for nominal consumption that the average human might use. The crews may be taking steps to reduce their metabolic levels, trying to extend that supply, but we just don't know what's happening down there. So right. it's all just so very uncertain. Yeah, and obviously, of course, the focus is a search and rescue mission. But there are a lot of questions about the sub company and some of the safety issues they've had in the past. You're right. They had an issue back in 2018. There was a lawsuit that claimed the sub's testing and certification was insufficient, but the company, uh, it's called Ocean Gate. They said the person raising those claims was not even an engineer and only saw a prototype, not the actual vessel mm -hmm. that's missing now. So they kind of argued that point. Um, take it for what it's worth. We'll have a report coming up at five when you join us. There. Yeah, and everyone is watching. Yeah. This unfold. yeah. All right. Thanks, Kim. Sure. Well, the family of a man shot to death by a Roseville police officer has now filed a wrongful death suit against the city and the officer. You may remember the shooting back in April of 2022. Police say Frank Robles crashed head on into a truck on Grosbeck near 12 Mile and stumbled out of his vehicle with a knife in his hand. Officer Chad Lee ordered him to drop the knife and open fire when Robles refused and took steps toward him. The officer in this case was cleared of any criminal wrongdoing, but Robles' wife now argues her dead husband's civil rights were violated. The family is seeking damages in excess of $10 million. We called Roseville police for a comment, but haven't heard back as of yet. A new auto theft task force is sending a message to car thieves and anyone who does business with them, knock it off. Police from several Wayne County towns and prosecutors are working together to fight rising crime numbers. Investigators tell us that car thefts are up about 30% in Metro Detroit since last year. Detroit, Dearborn Heights, Garden City, Livonia, Dearborn, and Michigan State Police are all working together on this. Officers say auto theft is a top priority because that crime has a huge impact on the lives of victims. These crimes are against the people in our families, people that take their kids to school, their loved ones to a hospital or to a medical appointment, people that drive to work every day in the morning to improve their families' lives and their communities. When you take someone's means of transportation away, it's an attack on both their lives and their livelihoods. Tonight at 5, more from the task force on the reason auto thefts are skyrocketing and some new trends that they're seeing. That's for you on Local 4 News at 5 tonight. Southfield police have made an arrest as they investigate a shooting in a hotel parking lot at the Radisson on Telegraph Road at Swanson. 
Officers raced to the hotel around 2 o'clock this morning and found a 25-year-old man from Detroit was shot. We are told he is in critical condition. Police say they were able to find a suspect and arrested a 32-year-old man from Oak Park. So far, there is no word yet on a motive. All right, now let's take a sneak peek at the forewarned forecast. It is the summer solstice, but many of us are still waiting to see any kind of rain out there. Meteorologist Kim Adams is with us with the very latest. Hi, Kim. Hi, Christy. Well, we are definitely wishing for some rain uh, because we're so dry. We're in a moderately dry drought situation right now. Exact Track 40 radar looks dry, but if you look very, very closely, which we can do with Exact Track 40 radar, right at School Section Road in Richmond, See that little green right there? It's just a tiny little area of sprinkles right over that road. Uh, and we might see a couple more of these very isolated showers pop up here over the next several hours. But most of Metro Detroit will be dry through the evening and temperatures will cool down into the mid 70s by 10 o'clock, 71 at midnight tonight. We'll talk about our next chance for more widespread rain that could water our lawns and gardens finally in just a couple minutes. Now that sounds good. We'll see you then. Thanks, Kim. A local nonprofit that helps veterans needs help in two areas, finding more money and finding the men and women who've served our nation who need the help. Paula Tutman is live at the home of a Shelby Township veteran to illustrate a strange yin yang created by COVID, Paula. Yeah, it really is. First of all, though, I want to show you this cold blooded love going on behind me. But you know what? This is great therapy. And, and yeah, Christy, it's an interesting phenomenon that COVID created. Lots of entities were flooded with money and resources from the federal government. Now those resources are drying up and it means nonprofits that got a bit of a break because the government jumped in will now need to ramp back up because the government is jumping out. And this is a prime example. Good job. And that's the trust that he has that we were able to develop. David Denhart says he's an animal rescuer, but it's obvious to him and anyone else who meets him that the animals in his home are part of his rescue. It'll just sit here on my shoulders, hang out. He takes in birds and snakes and reptiles and fish, feeds them, loves them, rehabs them, and adopts them out. This is part of a healing process that many veterans will understand because when they are traumatized by war and bring that trauma home with them, healing looks different for every person. And when David was injured in Afghanistan, there was a long list of healing that had to be done. I was uh, close to a, a rocket and uh, I suffered a traumatic brain injury. I have uh, seizures, I have severe vertigo, I have cognitive and memory issues. When David was injured, he said there was a gaping space between getting into the VA benefit system and his immediate needs. And it was a Michigan nonprofit, Fallen Wounded Soldiers Fund, that found him and closed the gap with financial support, bill payments, and even home renovations. We provide a gap between when they're discharged and they're trying to get their full disability uh, the veteran, we, we, we helped them out in the meantime, and we've helped out with, uh, you know, with, with keeping a roof over their heads, um, food on the table and things for kids. I mean, we've supplied diapers, we've supplied baby food. Um, you know, we, we've, we've really helped in every way you could, you could think of. The fallen wounded soldiers fund is in need itself of two things, funding and finding funding. Every nonprofit needs money, but also finding veterans that need help. Pre-COVID, we were distributing about $750,000 a year over hundreds of families. Last year, I think it was about $450,000 to several hundred families as well. The organization has very little machinery. It is 100% volunteer powered. And as a local, smaller nonprofit, it can quickly dial in to the local needs of our veterans and be a stopgap to meet those needs. 97 cents of every dollar directly contributed to the fund goes towards uh, veterans helping veterans here. Yeah, by the way, I talked to my buddy, Laura Rios, the chief veteran service officer for Macomb, and she gave me a two thumbs up on this organization, you know, because the bottom line is this organization and many others like it. Again, as they're losing that COVID money, they need supporters and they need volunteers. And that means, Christy, we know it. They need us to help them out. Christy, it's, it's such an important story. Thanks, Paul. And I love the collection of animals. They they all bring us so much joy. <laughs> Menagerie. So, yeah. Thanks so much. Yeah.